How do you steal six billion? How do you steal six billion? Get In 2010, Vodafone settled a tax dispute with HMRC by paying £1.25 billion, a sum many think should have been much bigger. The company has a complicated structure involving Swiss branches of Luxembourg subsidiaries. In 2011, one Vodafone company paid less than 1% tax on $2.5 billion in profits. We understand this could be because most of the profits were attributed to the branch in Switzerland, where the effective tax rate is very low. In 2010, tax officials seem to have accepted Vodafone had a commercial reason for the arrangement beyond tax avoidance, as they said the company would not have to pay tax on the structure in future. But should they have investigated further? Is the Swiss branch primarily there to exploit a tax loophole? We went to Switzerland to find out. There are almost 30,000 international businesses in the Swiss canton of Zug, including some famous British brand names. Zug boasts a range of attractive tax breaks. Tesco has two branches in Zug at the same address. One is a branch of a firm called Chessant Overseas LLP. We went to see how much business goes on there. OK, so this looks like the limit of the presence here. On the letterbox, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there are 24 companies. One of them is Chessant Overseas LLP Zug Branch. All these companies are managed from a single office. We called in to ask how this was done. We noticed that Tesco has some arrangements which involve branches in this office. Is, is my understanding correct? I can give any information about that. You have to contact Tesco directly. Yeah. While we were in Zoo, we dropped by Boots' European headquarters. It's at 94 Barra Strasse, which is where we just arrived. But there's no sign of it. It's not announced on the notice board. Our next stop is Bern, where the Swiss branches of Vodafone's Luxembourg subsidiaries are based. We had arranged to speak to the local manager of the branches, posing as consultants looking to set up similar arrangements. Vodafone has an office here, downstairs. Right. One office, one office costs, I don't know, it costs. 300 francs a month or something like that, or 500 francs a month, I don't even know. Right. Oh, it costs, is, it costs it in it or no. is it anybody in it? Or is no, it's it? nobody in it. Right. Sometimes. <laughs> but it's dedicated to... It's dedicated to Vodafone. Okay. Yeah. Right, nobody there. <laughs> nobody there. <laughs> the, the, the ah, sometimes. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know if it's really necessary to have a room, but Vodafone really wants to have everything very, very uh, correct. Right. Mm. And they have a room, a rented room. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and how many people do you have to have on the books, do you know? Or is that something that the lawyer just, will know? Just, it's just me. Vodafone's accounts suggest the company could be using a common technique to avoid tax, allocating profits to a Swiss branch. We wondered whether these profits are really being made in these branches. We just do the bookkeeping for these branches. Yeah. Well, it, Vodafone is 5% or not even, not even 5% of my... Right. 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 We asked Vodafone why it would keep branches in Switzerland for bookkeeping services. We didn't receive a reply. If you're the bookkeep when you're a bookkeeper for a for a branch, yeah. do the to what extent do, does the company itself have to run that branch? Duck the branch. Yes, they come once here. Once once a year they come here once a year. and once or twice a year I'm going to Luxembourg. And are you involved in the in the decisions? In the decisions, yeah, involved. And <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> not really involved because I just I just follow the instructions. Then it's in, I follow I follow what the what the headquarters yeah, yeah. does. Then in Luxembourg, yeah. We put it to Vodafone that the Swiss branch was primarily there to help the company avoid tax. Vodafone said it had never claimed to have material activities or operations in Switzerland. 
The Swiss branch has not been involved in Vodafone's global financing for a number of years and is therefore irrelevant in respect to global financing arrangements. Vodafone's financing is managed in Luxembourg, supported only by part-time financial accounting and bookkeeping services in the Swiss branch. Vodafone has always been totally transparent and we have always fully disclosed such matters to HMRC and other relevant tax authorities. Vodafone declined to say how profits were attributed between Luxembourg and Switzerland. Before the UK authorities reached their agreement with Vodafone, they were given permission by the Court of Appeal to investigate the company's overseas affairs. Have you ever had any um, questions raised over the structure by the tax authorities that you know about? As far as I know, no. We asked HMRC whether it had investigated the Swiss structure before agreeing not to tax it in future. HMRC replied, we cannot provide details on individual taxpayers' settlements, but the amount paid by Vodafone resulted from a rigorous examination of the facts and the settlement was a good result for the UK. We will fundamentally reform the complex rules for controlled foreign companies. Proposals in last year's budget mean that very soon firms using schemes like Vodafone's will be taxed at a maximum of a quarter of the UK rate of corporation tax. For many, the rate will be 0%. Will this encourage other firms to set up similar structures? HMRC replied, the government is introducing modernised controlled foreign companies rules to better reflect the way that businesses operate in a globalised economy while continuing to provide protection against the artificial diversion of profits from the UK to low-tax jurisdictions. Asked about its Swiss branches, Tesco replied, We are one of the largest payers of tax in the UK. Any companies we have within low-tax jurisdictions are dormant, registered for UK tax, or subject to anti-tax avoidance regulation and fully disclosed to HMRC. Asked about its structure, Boots replied, Alliance Boots GmbH is the holding company of Alliance Boots and as such does not have a large number of employees. The function of this company is to hold groups' investments in over 25 countries. We fully comply with the relevant tax legislation in each of the countries where we operate.